Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to teach a robot an if statement. Now, an if statement allows you to define a condition. If that condition is true, the robot will execute a scope of statements. If the condition is false, the robot will execute a different scope of statements. So it's very similar to an if-else-then statement in programming languages. To give an example, add any robot you want to the 3D world, go to the Program tab, and in the Program Editor panel, I'm working with the main routine. I'll now click this icon here to add an if statement. And notice an if statement is listed with its condition, which you can see right here. And it has two scopes. It has a then scope and an else scope. Now if you want to add statements to these scopes, you can either select it or select the conditional tag here. And let's go and add a print statement here. And you can print whatever message you want to. I'll say, hello world. And for the else scope, I'll select the scope here add another print statement and say goodbye world and now if the statement condition is true the statements in the then scope will be executed but not the statements in the else scope if the condition is false the else scope of statements will be executed but not this then scope to give you an example right now the condition is true so we should expect the robot to print hello world in the output panel if I run the simulation you can see in the output panel it prints hello world, but it did not execute this print statement for goodbye world in the else scope. So that's how an if statement works. Let's reset. And if you want to edit the condition of an if statement, select it in the program editor panel here. Go to the statement properties panel. And here is its condition property. So this allows you to write an expression. And when that expression is evaluated, it either returns a true or false value. If the value is true, the then scope of statements are executed if it returns a false value, the else scope. So if I actually write false here and run the simulation, you can see this time the output panel had printed goodbye world. So if we reset, and for writing your expression, you can go to the help file by clicking this icon here, expand the reference guide, expand expressions, and here you can find some helpful topics for writing an expression. Let's actually close this out, and I'll give you a couple more examples. So you can use numbers, so a value of zero will return a false value. A value greater than zero, for example, one or 100, will return a true value. You can use arithmetic to write your expression. So you can say two plus two is equal to five. Now, is that true or false? It's false. So this condition here will return a false value and the if statement will execute its else scope, which you can see here. So if we actually teach the robot to move over here, if the condition is false, make that a point to point motion statement, Reset, run the simulation. You can see the condition, two plus two is equal to five, was false, so the robot did the else scope of statements. Let's reset, select our if statement again. And you can also use conditional or and operators. So if I use two ampersands here, there we go. I can now write three other conditions, or as many as I want. So three plus three is equal to six. Now this statement here is true, but this one is false. So in order for this whole condition to be true, you know both of these statements need to be true. Likewise, you can use OR operator. So you can use two pipes here. There we go. So this time, if one of these statements is true, the whole condition will return a true value. So three plus three is equal to six is true. So if I run the simulation, you can see the robot did not move over here, but it did print hello world. So it executed the then scope. Let's reset. And instead of using arithmetic and those conditional operators, you can also use the properties of a robot. For example, if I select the robot in the 3D world, in the component properties panel, you can see it has these default properties, which you can reference by name. So we have J6, J1, those are the joints of the robot. So let's go back to our if statement and say that if J1 is equal to 90, then the condition should return a true value and execute the then scope. Else, if J1 is not equal to 90, you know, the condition will be false and the robot will execute the else scope here. So let's make this be true. I'll select the if statement here. And before we do that, let's go to our jog panel and under joints section here, let's set it to be 90. I'll now teach this as a point to point motion statement in the program editor panel. And I'm going to make it come before the if statement. So I'll just drag it to be the first statement in the main routine. So now the robot will move to P2. Its joint one right here will be at 90 degrees. So when this if statement is executed, this condition right here will be true. And we should expect the robot to print hello world. 
Let's reset, run the simulation, and yep, we can see in the output panel it printed Hello World. Let's reset, and select the robot again, and in the Component Properties panel, if you want to reference the properties in these tabs here, you can do that, so I'll click Executor tab here. It has a couple properties in this group, so to do this, you reference the tab name followed by two colons and the property name. So is enabled right now is set to true. Let's go to our if statement and say that if executor two colons followed by the property name is equal to true, then this whole condition should be true and execute the then scope. So I know it is true, so if I run the simulation, we can see in the output panel it printed hello world. But let's actually test this again and say if executor dot is enabled is equal to false, execute the then scope. Otherwise, the condition is false, and we should see the robot move over here to execute the else scope of statements we see. Let's run the simulation, and yep, our condition was false. So the robot executed the else scope. Let's reset. And now another way is to reference the variables of a routine that this if statement belongs to. So I'm working with the main routine here in the program editor panel. I can go to the routine properties panel here and add a new variable. Let's call it count. This is an integer variable. Right now it's set to zero. So in the program editor panel, let's create an assign variable statement. Let's set count to equal zero. Then let's create a while loop. And let's make our if statement be inside of that. And then what we'll do for our while loop, we'll increment the value of our count variable. So let's add another assigned variable statement. And we'll increment it its current value plus one. And make that be the first statement in our while loop. And then we'll execute a delay. Uh, let's say about three seconds. So now for our if statement, let's reference that variable called count in the routine that it belongs to. So we'll now say, if the count variable is less than 5, then this condition will evaluate as true, and the robot will execute this then scope here. Else, if count is not less than 5, we should see the robot go to that position 1 and print goodbye world. So this probably will take a couple, you know, a couple seconds in order for the count variable to be greater than 5 to see the robot move over here. So let's actually teach the robot to do something else than print hello world for the Zen scope, so I'll just move the robot down, add a point-to-point -point motion statement. So if I run the simulation, robot moved over here, it now has a delay. The condition was true, so the robot moved down here, and we should see the loop eventually move the robot over here. So the simulation is running, 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 we can see in the program editor panel, here's the delay, and if I now stop the simulation, select the main routine here, we can see that the robot is over at this position, which is in the else scope of the if statement. And in the routine properties panel, we can see that the variable count has a value of six. So this is just a couple examples of how you can use an if statement and how you can define its condition. Now, before I end the video, I want to quickly go over a very common use case for an if statement. In the 3D world, I have a layout open, which you can find a link to in the video description. And I hope that you use this layout as a good exercise and tool for learning more about an if statement. In the 3D world, there's a robot, and I've programmed this robot to pick parts from these conveyors and place them over here. Now, when using an if statement, you can reference the input ports of a robot. So with the robot selected, I'll go to the show group, select the signals checkbox here, and we can see that the sensor bullion signals on these conveyors are wired to the input ports in the robot. So we have an input port of 100 and 101. Now in the program editor panel, notice I have a while loop in the main routine, and the if statement here is referencing the input port of 100. So if the input port of 100 is equal to true, it's gonna call the subroutine for picking a green part and then placing it. Else, notice I have another if statement nested here. If the input port 101 is equal to true, then call this subroutine for picking a pink part and placing it. Else, it'll do nothing, and I have a delay here. So if I hide the signals editor now and run the simulation, you can see what happens. So once the green part reaches the sensor here, the input port of 100 is true, so the robot picks the part and places it. A pink part reached the sensor here, so it's true. The robot picked the part and placed it over here. But eventually we come across an error where the robot is just picking this green part. It's no longer picking this pink part. 
So to work around that, let's reset, go back to our main routine, and look at our structure. So we have an if statement, and we have a nested if statement here. So it seems that the robot is never actually going to this else scope here. So what we can do, I will change the location of that if statement, and put it at the same level as this other one here. So now what the robot will do, it'll check if this input port of 101 is true, call the routine for picking the pink part and placing it, and then after that it'll execute this other if statement, so if the input port of 100 is equal to true, pick that green part and place it. Let's see if this fixed the issue, so I'll run the simulation again, speed it up, robot picks the green part, so far so good, it gets that pink part, it gets the green part, and it goes back for more for that pink part. All right. Okay. Well, this ends the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.